What is going on everybody, welcome back to the Civilization 5 Deity Europe AI only battle. It is still very action packed, we've got the fall of Greece looking pretty imminent right now as you can see. Um, someone did, or well, thank you for the comments, correcting us on explaining what happened with the city. For those of you that haven't read, maybe don't, didn't look and didn't understand, the Ottomans apparently, I don't know how you knew this, um, but apparently, maybe I just didn't see it and was being blind, but apparently there was an Ottoman scout glitched into the city. I have no idea how that happens, but that obviously happened at some point and uh, obviously that was basically blocking people from conquering it like for a glitch but obviously when the Ottomans died to Greece I assume that it was probably a very similar time so actually for Greece killing the Ottomans was actually a bad idea but there you go they obviously were not to know that and obviously with the the killing of I think if you lose your last city all the units do die yeah I don't know why it doesn't work for me I guess I never settled so that's probably why but there you go, this is where the awkwardness starts. Russia grabs the city of Argos, Argos here. And uh, that's, yeah, that makes the borders a bit more interesting. Because Austria is probably going to grab Corinth. And then, yeah, you're going to have some pretty gross border gore. I'm sure these two will be going at it fairly soon. I wonder if Austria can maybe team up with the Soviets. Obviously, Russia picked a good time in at the moment. They're on the same team, effectively, as Austria at the moment. And the Soviets are busy in Sweden. So they're doing, doing just fine with that one. But, uh, yeah, it's looking all around interesting. Some people in Discord, I noticed, discussing the Huns in a rough spot. And I, yeah, I agree. Assyria. And uh, maybe that's why they left Armenia alive. For someone to, you know, attack later on to make it look like they're doing better than they are. But, yeah, the Huns are stuck in a rough spot. I mean, if they joined Austria, that would also be another... That would actually be worse than the Soviets. Because Russia could kind of defend this from the same, you know, it's one long line. Whereas if you had to fight the Huns, who are very concentrated into this border, and then Austria all the way over here, that's a lot more spread out. I think you could probably manage to sort of spread along this with the city's help as well. Here's more spaced out. It may actually play into their hands. I, it probably won't happen, so let's not, you know, get ahead of ourselves. But there we go. Wow, they just produced all of this out of nowhere. That was very quick for Russia. A lot of guided and nuclear missiles. Obviously, no oil. It does seem to be an issue. Um... I will probably check it from in the future and add oil if we need to add some more. I think I'm going to give each, each sieve, like, just go to where their capital is, and, like, dot around it, some extra strategic resources. My one concern is, obviously, if they die before they even have access to those resources, someone else is going to get double. But, yeah, I'll probably just give everyone, like, one source of uranium, one source of oil, one of aluminium, so they can at least have the bare minimum next to their capital. Um, and I won't put them just around in a circle, because that would look a bit weird, but something like that, you know. To give everyone a chance or maybe i'll allocate each of them just two resources so like one sieve will get oil and iron one might get uranium and horses just try and balance it out a little bit something like that i'm not sure but yeah I'll, I'll be more more proactive with that in the future because it does it, it does seem to be that there's not as much oil for the i don't think it's necessarily the map is set that way i think the tiles are random on the map but as i said touched upon before and someone commented nicely it, uh, apparently there's like a bias towards oil and tundra tiles. So also I imagine there's a lot of oil up here that no one can have. And I'm guessing the Soviets do have some? No, the Soviets don't have battleships, you see. So they probably don't have any either. They do have a couple of planes, but they're the aluminium requiring planes. So yeah, that does kind of make sense with the oil. Luckily, we're beginning to get beyond the oil era anyway. Like most of the planes won't need oil anymore. Sweden actually did retake Stockholm. And, uh, wow. We get into feel the uh, pollen for the day, I think. <laughs> Not that I've been outside, but it's going to be really high pollen in the UK today. Today I'm recording this, and that's not good for me. That is, yeah, pollen does not go well for my eyes. Nothing else, like I don't cough or sneeze or anything with hay fever. Just eyes that burn. So that'll be fun. That's coming in the next few months. Just if things, you know, couldn't get any worse. Oh my goodness, the Soviets have an XCOM squad. Okay, um, in terms of comments, I obviously asked for some advising me so far since that episode went up. The only one I got was, as long as it's still this entertaining, let's keep going. And you know what, I'm fine to do that with these 25 minute ones. I've scheduled them a bit better to when I make them. I'm just doing one of these a day and then more of the other ones instead of like having to sit down and do two or three of these in a row because they are longer. Um, although at the moment, I say that at the moment, I've quick, I've skipped a couple of second channel things because I have something else I've got to do. So I'm just focusing on that separately and then they'll come back next week but yeah that might obviously be an issue because those recordings take like an hour 
That's ridiculous. Sometimes we play Risk if you want to uh, want to hop in, join some games. Maybe not Risk next time because it's getting a bit long. I'm trying to find a way to shorten it. Maybe remove the bot. I don't know. More players made it worse. I tried to take it away and I took players. No, sorry, less players made it worse. But then my Austria pieced out with Greece. They gave up on that one. That was that's pretty interesting. Didn't expect that. I mean, Russia is starting to look very scary again. Definitely a content. I have no idea who's going to win this one. Obviously, it's based on the info addicts. That's how we normally do it. Uh, well, it's how we're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, Rome v Sweden as well. Rome is obviously at war with Spain, not having too much success at the moment. Morocco finally starting to diminish Portugal's numbers. But yeah, I'm not too sure how this is going to end up, to be honest. Are we still on turn one? No, turn two. Maybe three. What do we start on? 238. Turn two. Um, yeah, we are going to do the info addicts. I don't know who's winning. Like, I think Arabia was. But the problem is when when we last checked, Assyria only just were finishing up. So now I imagine Assyria are much closer. Obviously not manpower, but in all the other aspects which still count, I imagine Assyria in particular is much Because on paper, Assyria should be much stronger, I think. They are much bigger. Now they probably have more population. Some of these cities are starting to get big again. Istanbul, Adern, Damascus here, Ankara. They're starting to grow a bit. A, that's just a, yeah, nuclear subs. Okay. Yeah, like these two are probably neck and neck. I wouldn't say there's much in it. But I think obviously Assyria are going to do better in the long run. Because they're bigger. And Arabia has to fight them at some point. Like it's got to happen. Obviously they could go through Mercuria as well. But even once you're through that, it's Assyria again. Like it, It's coming at some point between those two. Morocco is another one. We, it's hard to compare them. They're sort of isolated out here. They're not having amazing success against Portugal. They grabbed one. See, they grabbed this city a few times. We'll see if they make some more progress now. And then obviously Russia. Where do they weigh into that? Because they 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 were losing to the Soviets, so I would have put the Soviets ahead of them. But now they've just you know added quite a few cities again. So they're going to be probably on the rise. They're probably ahead. They've at least made up. At the very least, they've made up the ground they lost. Obviously losing Rostov, Yaroslavia, Novgorod. I think they've at least made that up. And obviously the Soviets are progressing now. Stockholm will be a good city. If they could get Gothenburg without losing it back and forth too many times, then they're going to be in an amazing spot. So we'll see what happens there. Obviously Austria is still in it. They are probably in the worst location to do it. I mean, in theory, I, I don't know if that's true. I mean, they all, all the big guys border someone else who's big. Like, Morocco's the exception in the corner. But, um, like, they all border another big one. So I get, like, the Soviets and Austria could happen, but that's a pretty equal... I don't want to say equal, actually, looking at it now. But, you know, Austria could nuke them. So there's there's that sort of turn. But Portugal retook their city in the north. But, yeah, Austria definitely, like... it Bordering lots of people, obviously, isn't great. But at the same time, like... They're not threats. France, Great Britain, Sweden. I assume Austria might join against Sweden at some point. Switzerland still. Like, they're not threats to Austria. Russia is the big threat. Like, Russia is the main threat for the Soviets. Uh, sorry, for Austria. And it's the same for the Soviets. Like, they're in a similar position, really. And it's actually easier for Austria to conquer more people. Because the Soviets have to cross the sea and stuff. And now they have to cross the land <laughs> as well. Like, it's just a very awkward way of doing things. But there you go. We'll see how that all works out for them. Whoa, it's making me go down this way. Mercuria has completed the Manhattan Project. There we go. Quite a nice little addition for them, I guess. I'm surprised it took them that long. I would have thought they would have had it by now, but there you go. So I wonder when are the Garamantes getting it? That's the big surprise. They were one of like the first to get planes. I'm guessing just through, like like as we've said now, oil seems to be... Hard to come by in this map. World's Most Wonders. Arabia's got 11. 8 for Austria. 6 for the Soviets. 3 for Russia. And then 2 for Morocco. The Garamantes. Armenia. Britain. Portugal. And France. Oh, finished perfectly on 10th. Delegates. They're banning crabs at the moment in Austria. Obviously, uh, maybe just an itch they couldn't scratch. So they're, they're getting rid of those, maybe. Maybe that's the, that's the cause. Do-do. How's it looking? 
So yeah, we are starting to see a build up, even if it's not planes, there's guided missiles and stuff. So some of the other strong civs getting their access to so I'm sure Norway must not have any oil, which is a surprise. Britain had some. Sweden has some. So I, yeah, there must be some in the North Sea that is a spot for oil. Um, Britain did have some, I say. I don't know where they are. There they are on that boat. But not much more. How are Morocco progressing? They're looking good. I don't know why they have so much stuff still stored down here, hidden away. Maybe they're trying to hide it from the rest of the world. But yeah, they don't actually... You know, this could, would all be pretty useful on the front line. But obviously then, I guess they're having to attack a lot of things. It's good. Uh, they're sort of spread out now. It's going to be a bit awkward. But yeah, they're definitely thinning Portugal's units out. If you took the archaeologists away, I think it would look very worrying for Portugal. See, luckily for us, Morocco's are mostly down this way, so they're not as interfering with how it looks. Oh, there's bombers, fighters. Russia's going to keep pushing into Greece, which is going to make Rome really regret not attacking them when they had the chance, because who they border now is a heck of a lot scarier. So, Rome, you're beginning to uh, let this one slip away. You're probably still just maybe in a top 10 conversation, I don't know. There's too many civs to consider at this time. I think it's too too up in the air to be talking about who is a top 10 civ at the moment. I mean, obviously some of them are obvious, but once you get beyond like 5, I think that's when it... Uh, maybe 7, 4, 5, 6. I think there's 7 like solid confirmed ones, which are the, the 4 here in Europe, sort of around Russia. So the Huns, Russia, Soviets, Austria. I think they're probably the top in the top... Four, they're like three, no, sorry, four to seven, or no, four, five, and six. Wait, no, no, sorry, there's four of them. Yeah, four to seven, sorry. And then the top three are probably Assyria, Arabia, Morocco. And then there's probably Norway, like in eighth, on, on info addicts and stuff. And then beyond that, it could be Rome, Spain, Portugal, Britain, France are looking better now. Greece is starting to fall away. Mercuria could still be clinging on. I think they're slipping away now. And that's about it, really. There's no one else that's that strong. Greece is sort of the other one that you'd ne probably say is next, and they're sort of dying. I guess the Garamantes will probably leapfrog some of them. At some point, they're looking good. Carthage is a manageable issue at the moment. They're, they're still losing Sahara Desert tiles to the Garamantes of Morocco. They're still going to get surrounded at some point, which is going to be pretty brutal. That's going to be a, not a fun one, but there you go. So many big cities now. There must be a lot. I don't know what the total population of the whole world is in this, but it must be getting quite high. Can't imagine. It's very low. How is this going? Soviets made their progress. Sweden not really taking it back at the moment. Armenia still here. Just one city. Not much to do. Just waiting for either Attila or Assyria to take him out. Valachia had their turn. They're still around. I wonder if they'd take out the Goth soon. I don't know if they're strong enough definitely happen that would be a good moment for them Russia still progressing against Greece and here we go big turn for the Soviets just try and make sure Sweden doesn't grab this back and yeah that's mostly units killed so they might even oh an XCOM squad's hopping in maybe gonna push even further now that will be interesting we'll see how that works out for them Morocco retook Cartena again <laughs> In terms of this, Barcelona's taking a bit of damage, but for the most part, Rome's defending it. They clearly don't want to use the nuke just yet. And another city's fallen. This island, Malta, I think that's meant to be Malta, has fallen to the Garamantes. So Greece still losing. I don't know how, why they're not using all their boats is a bit weird, but whatever. Yeah, so far, so good for Greece. Doing a good job. Not not the same, can be said for some civs. Switzerland, not doing so good. I'm not really sure where their future lies for them. They're just in an awkward like land spot. They're probably going to be safe till the end, to be honest. I don't, don't think Rome. Rome have got it in them to take them out, I'm going to be honest. Okay, Greece do at least retake Malta for now. Garamantes don't really have any more boats, so they might, might hold on to that, actually. Greece shouldn't be losing it, really. They are losing more and more in the north as well, which doesn't help. Russia and Rome having their turns. Pretty pretty big, going right next to each other. Oh, Russia, that was so close, into the red. But no success yet in the conquering of Corinth. 
they have to push quite a bit further once they get beyond that, like to Sparta. So I imagine this will be the last one, and maybe they'll peace out for one of these, something like that. And Greece will at least get to, you know, look a bit more like normal Greece. I'm so I don't get Greece. They were so big, like they had so many cities, but it just never really, never really worked out in like the science and the military. They just never seemed. They they were a lot bigger than. For how big they were, they were not doing that good. It didn't really make sense. Compared to like someone like Rome, who is smaller and more obviously a bit more population. But yeah, Rome is on paper much better than Greece. But there you go. That's how it works out, right? Austria is beginning to stack a ton of units on the map, which is probably why the game is so slow at the moment. Sometimes I just needed some good wars to uh, remove those units. That can always be quite useful when that happens. But yeah, they're starting to stack up at the moment. Oh, it's 241. Well, we'll go. This episode will take us to 243. So the next one will go to 248. Then we'll look at the info addicts in the one after that, which will then. And then we'll just do two turns after the info addicts to get to 250. So it'll be like a short episode. And then we'll be back on track towards getting to five turns in episode till we get to 300. Then there'll be the results. And then I will push it on further if. I don't, well, I can push it on further, actually. Now is the perfect time to do so, but I have plenty of time to do it. But I don't know how far the computer will let me do it. But I'll try and get to... I won't begin... I don't think we'll get to 600 again, like that last game. That game ran really well, because... I don't know why, but it ran really well. I think, weirdly enough, and it's hard to obviously put it into perspective. I don't, If you're all familiar with the world map that I use, with like the smaller Pacific Ocean, I actually think it is a... Overall, in terms of tiles, um, I think it's smaller. Like, I think the world map is smaller than this map. I might be completely wrong. I think this one's more square. Like, there's more up tiles. So, like, doing this is much bigger, if that makes sense, I think, than the world map that I use. Um, it's more upwards, and maybe it's a bit less width. But to be honest, I mean, maybe not. In my, I think this map is equal, if not bigger, to that Earth map, which is pretty weird to think, because it, obviously it's just a smaller part. But you know, like in Western Europe, on Austria, to look like this on that world map that I usually play with, Austria, you need two, three cities, like that's what you'd need to look like this. And here they have like 13, something ridiculous, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah. France, like this is one, maybe two at best on that map. The UK, you get three cities maybe. We'll see this map is like three times well it's like zoomed in three times but i think in terms of tiles obviously i've cut off quite a few chunks which has helped but up here and everything i'm hoping i've got this right i, I feel like i need to move it in more it's just I've, all, I've based it off the line of where russia actually spawns that's kind of <laughs> what it was based on we could have had finland as well and cut off this bit but it, it didn't matter too much i think we were we had enough and i don't know if maybe finland didn't load or something now, I have I put plenty of mods on, but you know some of them just don't load up at all to be chosen. Nowadays, obviously the game is like ten years old, so it kind of makes sense. I imagine a lot of the modders have moved on to uh, other things as well. Probably not too focused right now on making sure their Civ Civ Five mods are working, which is obviously fine. I think that's probably wise. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's probably you know time to move on eventually. I guess. I don't know where I'm going with this. Well, like, you know, I'm not not, not, I'm not ungrateful that these people, they've made some amazing mods. That's what I'm trying to put across. And, you know, you can't expect them to update it forever. That's just the way the world works, I'm afraid. But it's fine. It's good. We've got plenty of fun out of the mods. Um, obviously, people have been suggesting I go back to the historic spawn dates. I will try it. It would be a cool, like, nostalgia to try it again. Um, it didn't work last time I tried it when I tried to do it again in a stream, but that was like four years ago. That didn't really click in my head straight away how long it had been when I was like, no, we've done it. Well, I tried it before and it didn't work. I didn't realize that was four years ago. Obviously, I don't know what that means. In four years, maybe it got fixed, but also four years, maybe it's not changed one bit, sort of onto my previous argument. So we'll see. We'll see where that one goes. But yeah, I'll, I'll give it a look. Because the next battle isn't actually decided upon. Um, obviously, I can now do a lot of things because we've moved up to deity we can sort of redo some things so i could probably you know i've got to do a world map on deity at some point i guess 
Um, but yeah, there's a lot of suggestions for maps. Asia is a popular one. I'm looking into that one. That is definitely on the cards. It probably won't be the next one, but it is, you know, one I'm looking at because I'll have to pick the map, move everyone around myself. It won't be the case of just choosing who's who. I'm afraid. It won't be, yeah, because in this, they will spawn in the right place. The only sieves I move are the ones that spawn too close to each other. And then I moved a couple, just sometimes I move a couple, like, historical sieves that I'm hoping the history buffs won't pick up on and notice that I've moved, basically. That's sort of my genuine approach, like, just to make the game better. The, the Mapuche is a regular example. They spawn in pretty much the same spot as the Chile mod. So I usually just move the Mapuche to the other side of South America. And I say I do it, but you know, hopefully no one notices and gets too mad about it. it might be an inaccurate, because it just there's not really many sieves. And I, I know the mod works, which is also quite nice. You Knowing they spawn and actually don't break. I, I don't want to try too many new ones. We've had issues in the past with mods. So if I can just use one that I work and no one's going to notice or complain about, and I can put it in a position that makes the game more interesting, that's fine. There isn't too many, I don't think there's any examples of that in this one. At least not alive anymore. Egypt got moved because they were next to Mercuria. I don't know if it would have worked. I was more worried, it wasn't so much I was worried about Mercur it, them not settling. I think Egypt was like here. It was more I was worried they'd just cut off Mercuria in a box and then they wouldn't be able to do anything. So I moved Egypt anyway. Other sieves, I'm trying to think. If I moved, who did I move? I moved the Soviet Union because I think they spawn. Actually, I don't know. Did I? Yeah, I did. They spawned next to Moscow. I, I assume the city would have still been called Leningrad, but they do spawn just next to Moscow. I don't know if the city name Moscow... Maybe because Russia goes first, the city name is taken. Maybe these guys would have had Moscow as well if they settled first, which would make sense, to be fair. They, do they both? Oh, no, that is different. No, that is Russia's Yaroslav. I, I'm guessing they have some... They definitely have some overlapping names. Not too much gone on this last few turns. I have been ranting on, but I have been paying attention. Spain's still holding off. Morocco, Portugal still going. The Soviets are going to probably conquer Gothenburg, which is a big blow to Sweden. I don't think that's this turn, though, because I think the Soviets just went. But, yeah, it, it's still very interesting. This episode's actually going to probably be a bit shorter. So there we go. We're moving on up in the world. We've knocked three minutes off somewhere. I don't know what exactly has caused that. Maybe the death of some units from Portugal, Greece has helped a bit. I'm not really sure. But there we go. We'll see. How are the Goths doing? They're not, not in a great spot anymore. Oh, Assyria, plenty of planes and some atomic bombs in the region. I wonder how many sieves will be left at the end. It's going to be quite interesting, but there we go. We've reached the end of this one. As always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you're new to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.